Okay, welcome everybody to the Unit 1 review for the CSA. Um, which of these statements is true about the two triangles graphed below? Which of these statements is true about the two triangles graphed below? So we have these triangles. We can see that this is uh, six units and six units. And this is uh, from 2 to 12 is 10 units. And this is from 2 to 12 is 10 units. So we have some Id identical triangles here. Um, so that means that these triangles have to be what we call congruent because this side is congruent and this side, side side. And that means that the third side would be congruent, which means only the congruent statements would make sense. Them being not congruent wouldn't make sense. So we can eliminate C and D here. Now we just have to figure out which of these two is true because one says one can be obtained by reflecting across the x-axis. Well, here's the x-axis right here. And here's the other one says you can obtain it by reflecting across the y-axis. So here's the y-axis here. Now, if I reflected this object over the y-axis, I'd end up over here somewhere. And that's obviously not the case. So we're going to get rid of the one with the y-axis. And by default, there's only one answer that makes sense. Let's look, at, let's look at number two here. We have uh, a lot of writing here. Let's look at the image. Uh, here's the origin at zero, zero. Now let's look, are these objects the same size? Yeah, so probably no dilation will occur. Let's identify which one's the pre-image. It's the one that doesn't have the apostrophe, so this is the image over here. This is in quadrant four and this one's in quadrant three. The orientation, the J's are in the same position, but look at the K's. The K's are in flip-flop position, so it's likely that either a rotation or a reflection has happened, and then L is also kind of a, a mirror image. So which statement in the table verify that triangle JKL, JKL is congruent to J prime, K prime, L prime by describing a sequence of transformations? Select true or false for each statement. Okay, so I'll write a T or an F for each one. Triangle JKL is translated two down and then translated eight left. Well, the problem here is just taking it down and left for each point. It's not going to reverse the, J, the K and the L. It's not going to flip them over. So that's just two translations. That's not going to change. Uh, the orientation won't be changed won't be changed. So that's that's not going to happen. JKL here is translated two units and then reflected across the y-axis. Well, that might work if I take this down two and two and two. If I take them all down two and then I reflect that object over the y-axis, this is y, that'll work. So that's going to be a true statement. Triangle JKL is reflected across the x-axis. Now, if I take this and I reflect it across the x-axis, it's going to end up up here in Q1. That's not going to help me, right? And then translating it just two units down, that won't work. Let's take a look at problem three here. We have a, we have a kind of a missing axis, I believe, from the, ty from the type. Let's just uh, add an axis in here. And we'll add an axis right here for X. I believe it's somewhere in here. So let's take a look. Uh, triangle ABC can carried on to triangle. So we have A, B, C is carried on to D, E, F by a dilation through the origin. Okay, well, here's the origin here. Um, Let's say that this point F is at 0, 3, and here we have this point at C at 0, 6. So we're carrying the larger triangle. ABC is the larger, and it's the pre-image. And it's carried on to DEF, which is smaller. So when we look for a dilation factor, we're taking a... We got to go from 
zero six. So I'm multiplying my x's and y's. Well, let's do it up here. This is my x and my y. I need to make. How do I get from six to three? Well, I got to multiply by zero point five or one half. So I got to do that times both. If I'm going from from the origin, I got to do it for both points. So the scale factor. I believe you could it's one half or it's 0 0.5 problem four which series of transformation shows that figures one and two are similar well similar means it has to undergo a dilation now we have to look at the relative size of this object to this object well, let's look at it's a diagonal line so I think I can look at this line here it goes from negative this is six units and from 5 to 2 is 3 units. Okay, so looks like I have to shrink the larger triangle by 1 half. So I need to, I need to reduce the size of triangle 1 by 1 half or 0 0.5. So I'm taking the larger going to the smaller. If I look at these things down here, I've got a lot of options here that say a dilation with scale factor of one half. Okay, well, dilation factor is what we're multiplying by. And we already looked at the relative size of this triangle to this triangle. So the ones that have dilation scale factor of one fourth don't really make sense. So we'll just eliminate those answers right off the bat. Now, this orientation of this triangle does not look the same. If I take this, this point here is this point. I can't just tr translate these points. They're not going to move in the right direction. It looks like it must have undergone some type of a rotation because the orientation is all a little bit off, which only leaves, this one says, you dilate, then reflect and translate. So we know that it must have had a rotation of some kind. Here we have problem five. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Rectangle ABCD undergoes a series of transformations. So let's label this as the pre-image. And this over here is the image. Okay, so it looks like we're also again dilating something. Let's pop the points in here. We have negative 8, 4. Negative 4, 4. Negative 8, negative 2 and negative 4, negative 2. And over here we have, it looks like 2, 2, wait. Negative 8, 4. Here we have 2, comma, 2. And we have 2, negative 1. And we have 4, 2. And we have 4, negative 1. So if I look at this, how do I go from negative 8 to 2, negative 8 to 2, negative 4? Which series of transformations could rectangle ABC have undergone to result in rectangle PQRS? PQRS. It looks like possibly we might be looking at a reflection here, a dilation with a scale factor of 2. Well, that won't work because we're going from the larger to the smaller. So we can get rid of that right away. A dilation with a scale factor of a half, that works, and then maybe a reflection across the x-axis. Well, let's be careful. There's the x-axis. A dilation of a scale factor of two and a reflection across the x-axis. Well, we already looked at that and said the scale factor, it's getting smaller. So it's one of these two. This looks like 
the dilation, we can shrink it by a half and then reflect it across the y-axis. So that would be the only one that made sense here. On the graph, it, triangle ABC was transformed to create triangle ADE. So ADE is the image, which makes ABC the pre-image. Again, the pre-image is larger than the image. That's smaller. Uh, which transformation shown triangle ABC is similar? I got a half, a third, and a half. So let's take a look at how that's zero, 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 three. This is zero, negative six. And this points at eight, negative six. And this points at negative four, three. So if we look at the relationship between eight and four, that's a half. 6 and 3 is a half, 6 and 3 is a half, so we're looking for dilation scale factors of a half. So we can get rid of these dilation scale factors of one third, no problem. And then we have to look at the orientation. It does not look like this thing is uh, translated because the orientation is wrong, but if we rotate it 180 degrees and shrink it, that should be the only answer that makes sense. Alright, given that the segment WT is parallel to segment YP, so we got these parallel lines. We're looking for QIP, that's this one. Well, we had two ways of doing that. We did the triangle, we looked for this angle, or we looked for this outside angle. That was the two-step process, was a little bit easier, so we'll do the easier proof where we said, oh, okay, well, we know that angle QRT is equal to QER. That's the measure. Plus the measure of EQR. In other words, uh, QER was 51 degrees, and this one was QER, oh, it's my fault, 72 degrees, and EQR is 51 degrees, and they add up to, if I add that together, it's 3, 123 degrees. So we have this 123 degrees. Now, how do I know that that is true? That's the exterior triangle theorem. It's the two remote interior angles. These are the two remote interior angles add up to the exterior angle of a triangle. So, I now know that my angle QRT is 123 degrees. Well, I know that also that angle QRT, um, angle QRT is congruent to QIP. And how do I know that? Because they are in, here's the parallel lines, they're in similar up, right, up and right locations. So I'm going to go ahead and make this three arcs because they're identical angles and they're congruent because they are corresponding angles. Are congruent when given two parallel lines. So therefore, if QRT is 123 degrees, then that equals the measure of angle QIP. And then the essential questions, one and two. When comparing two figures, how do you know when two figures are congruent or similar or neither? So we did this with mapping. We used uh, GeoGebra mapping. And for the uh, 
congruent figures, we, uh, we use the rigid transformations, and for the similar figures, we use all four. And how are angle relationships useful when working with geometric figures? So we, we dealt with the parallel lines, cut by and transversal. We had five, we had five relationships there. And then we had the, uh, the interior and exterior triangle angle theorems. <laughs> Sorry, there we go. Anyway, so to be more precise on the language, we had uh, looked at the definitions being a little tighter here that when two figures are congruent if the series of so we're talking about congruency here if we use a series of rigid transformations that's to translate reflect and rotate and then we map the figure onto the second uh, similarity included dilations and uh, the other three transformations for angle relationships the interior and exterior angle theorems were, can be used to calculate missing angles of triangles and then we had that transversal line crossing the parallel lines. They had special relationships, and we could use those to calculate missing angles when we knew one angle, or we could describe the relationship between angles when no angles, angles are congruent. All right, well, good luck on your test on your U Unit 1 CSA.